The latest round of LEGO Ideas submissions reaching 10,000 supporters just closed. Let's take a look at the 49 sets that could one day become an official LEGO set in stores to buy. Hello everyone, welcome to Second Brick to the Left. Here we talk about LEGO set news, reviews and tips. Before we dive in, please be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. LEGO recently updated their blog with the results of the sets that had qualified for the second 2023 LEGO Ideas review. For those not familiar with LEGO Ideas, it's a platform that allows users to submit their LEGO creations, which the community can support. Once a creation reaches 10,000 supporters, LEGO will review that set, and if approved, they'll turn that set into an official LEGO set available for purchase. Past examples include the Motorized Lighthouse, Pirates of Barracuda Bay, and the Home Alone House. In this video, we'll go through the 49 sets featured in the blog. I've included the link to the blog in the description below. These sets have all reached 10,000 supporters and will now be reviewed by LEGO. The review process can take several months. If you're watching this in the future and the results have been revealed, Hopefully you'll find a pinned comment below with those. Just a small note, I'll be giving my own opinions in this video. We all like different things and clearly these sets reach 10,000 supporters, so no hate to any set or their creators. Reaching 10,000 supporters is a huge achievement and congratulations to everyone who made it. At the end of this video, I'll be giving my personal top 5 that I'd consider buying if they were made into official sets. I'm going to apologise to Swifties in advance. Sorry, I don't follow her. I've heard she's great though. There are several Taylor Swift inspired sets this round. In fact, there are five. And I'll be going over them very quickly because I can't do them justice. Feel free to leave your thoughts about those or any set in the comments below. And I may butcher the pronunciation of some usernames. I'm sorry. So let's do this. The first set is the Big Boy Locomotive by Laz HFL. This is an updated and more detailed version of a submission that previously reached 10,000 supporters by the same creator. According to the ideas page, this locomotive holds the record for the largest and most powerful steam locomotive in the world. It looks really cool and detailed. Next, the Retro Arcade by If You Build It. This is a fun set. I would imagine this will be a popular set. It would be a nice addition to a Lego City, and I imagine it brings back a lot of nostalgia for some. Personally though, I would have preferred the colour scheme to be a bit brighter. Next, we've got the Spartan Helmet of Leonidas by Delusion Brick. That looks so cool. What a creative use of flat pieces. Next is the Alfa Romeo Giulietta Spider by Lego Aussie Fan. Spider, where? This is a vintage car that, according to the ideas page, is recognised as one of the most aesthetically and technically successful convertible cars. Next, we've got another car, Red Bull Racing F1 Team RB18 by Lukash RS. The creator has really captured the F1 car here. There's a lot of branding on this though, I bet if this gets approved, we'll see a lot of that vanish. I do really like Red Bull though. Next up is The Muppet Show by Bulldozer. As a theatre, how stunning is this? Look at all of the details on the proscenium arch. The rear of the set is super detailed too. We've seen The Muppets in a collectible miniseries before. If you have those, this set would be the perfect place to put them. Next up, we've got the Scooby-Doo Mystery Machine by Let Them Fly. We've already seen a Lego Mystery Machine that was around in the mid-2010s. Maybe it's time to bring it back. Although this set introduces Scooby's collar tag as a display, with some interesting uses of brick separators. Next, we've got Western River Steamboat by CTD Power. I love this. It's stunning and really unique. It reminds me of the riverboats they have at Disney Parks. Probably not what the creator was going for, 
but they're so relaxing to ride. Next is Asterix and Obelisk by Gampat the Celt. Asterix is a French comic book and series of films, TV series and even a theme park. I don't personally know much about Asterix beyond the many examples in my French classes at school, but I get the impression Asterix is really popular. This submission is really adorable. I love the design of the buildings. They're really different and detailed. Is that a Lego goat? Could we get more Lego goats? Next, we've got DreamWorks Shrek Swamp by Pedro Ruiz MX. Oh my God, this set. Look at the minifigures. Shrek, Donkey, Princess Fiona and Puss in Boots. The house is adorable. I wouldn't say I love the idea of putting those leaf pieces on, but the effect is very cool. Next up, Venice by Lego Overwatch. This Venice set is really pretty. Look at all of the details around the windows and doorways. Plus the eaves are beautiful too. There was a Lego architecture set a few years ago depicting Venice's skyline and there was the Venice chase scene from Indiana Jones. I'm surprised we've not seen Venice more often. It's such an iconic city. Hopefully this submission will change that. Next, we've got Stilt House by Norton74. This is so cool. I really love nautical sets. The colour choices are just beautiful. The cabin colours work really well together and the pops of red are fun. If the designer's name sounds familiar, Norton74 was the designer of the A-frame cabin released earlier this year. Next up is another Red Bull F1 car, Red Bull RB18 by Mr B. This is another great F1 car, but I have similar thoughts to the other Red Bull car. I imagine the branding will be a sticky point. The next one is Trojan Horse by Daytona. Well, that's impressive. The attention to detail and use of different shades is amazing. The scale is awesome too. Look at the little mini figures. And people can fit inside it too. Next, we've got Red Dwarf Sleeping Quarters by Bro3. Red Dwarf was a British sci-fi TV series that began in the 80s and never seemed to stop with largely the same cast. The last outing was in 2020. This submission is awesome. I love all of the little references. Oh my god, it's the polymorph. If you know the scene, you know the scene. It's one of my favourite scenes. A set of Red Dwarf minifigures would be awesome. The creator of this set has done such a great job representing them. And look at the little tiny star bug. I love it. Next we have Tailspin Sea Duck Meat and Seagull by Delusion Brick. Wow, this is huge. I never saw Tailspin, but this looks like it would be a fun set to build. Next we've got Stud Lane Book Nook by Lord Squish. We've got to click into this one to really appreciate it. There's an animation. How cool is that? I love book nooks and this is such a cute one. It's got a really nice and quaint aesthetic. Next is the minifigure gumball machine by Goose Store. This is such a fun idea and I can see it being used for more than just minifigures. Next, we've got Greenhouse by Jared R2. This is nice. We often see Lego houses, but greenhouses, not so much. This could be a nice little add-on set. Next, we've got Yu-Gi-Oh! Card Box Dark Magician vs Blue Eyes White Dragon by Zero Helix. It's a nice idea, a box to keep Yu-Gi-Oh! cards in. Next up, we've got Disney's Phineas and Ferb Doofenshmirtz Evil Ink by Inevitable Brick. I've never seen Phineas and Ferb, but a purple building with a roller coaster inside it? I'm here for it. Next is Taylor Swift Lover House by Andrews Bricks. So that's the first of the Taylor Swift sets. Moving on, next is The Motograph by Conjura. This is another one we need to click into. That's pretty cool. 
The designer states they want it to be customizable so builders can make their own versions. I love that. Next up, we have Taylor Swift's Lover House by Donny Dings and Iceman999, the second of the Taylor Swift sets. Next, we've got another Phineas and Ferb set, Disney's Phineas and Ferb, Perry the Platypus, Agent P by Dragon Builder 22. Next is The Flying Scotsman by Loco Builder Bear One. This is another set I think will be popular with Lego train fans. The colours are a great match for the real life train. Next up is the Jumanji board game by Airbricks95. While that looks like a fun board game, who wants to play? No takers? Alright. I really like this idea and the creator has recreated the game really well. Next is Kerbal Space Program Modular Ship System by Sam67C. This is the set inspired by the video game Kerbal Space Program. Next is The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Lion's Blood. I remember this book. The submission looks just like it. I think this set would be a great one for getting younger ones into Lego. Although Lego idea sets tend to be 18 plus. Mm. I don't think that rating would fit this. Next is Working Lego Bicycle by Sleepy Cow. This doesn't look like Lego. When you look closer, you can tell that it is though. That's some very creative use of Lego. Next is The Muppet Theatre by Lee Forty. This is the second Muppet set on this list. Unlike the first, this one showcases the exterior of the theatre which looks amazing, but I think I do prefer the stage of the other set. The two sets would look epic combined. Next is The Landscape Photographer by Lobster Thermidor. This depicts a photographer atop a car in nature. I think this would be a nice set for fans of nature photography. Does anyone else think this set would look great with the A-frame cabin? Next is Schitt's Creek, The Rose Apothecary by Snorkel Maiden. Schitt's Creek was a Canadian sitcom. I guess this is a set for fans of the show, but it could have a pill with Lego City Builders too. Next is Vintage Toaster by Dime X Art. This looks great. I like toast as much as the next person, but I'm not quite sure we need a Lego toaster. Next is Taylor Swift Lover House by Water Leaper, the third of the Taylor Swift sets. Next we've got New York Corner by Bricky Brick. This set is a music club inspired modular. I really like the warm colours used in this. Next is Mr Rogers Neighbourhood by Brick Smithard. Apparently Mr Rogers Neighbourhood was an American children's TV show. As a Brit, I'm sure the Lego set is awesome, but I've no idea what that show is. Moving on, now we have one I do know. Mary Poppins Cherry Tree Lane 60th Anniversary by Free the Kraken and Disney Brick 55. Look at all of the details. This submission is absolutely stunning. I do like a Lego townhouse, or several. Admiral Boom's house is great and the little park is beautiful. I want to go fly a kite. I like the little carousel horse too. Next we've got the Krusty Krab by Lenko. We've seen the Krusty Krab in Lego before, but that was over 10 years ago. Spongebob is still popular. I think we're due another round of Spongebob Lego sets. Next is Taylor Swift Lover House by RC1317 the fourth of the Taylor Swift sets. Next is Snowy Morning in the Countryside by Caster Troy and Max Bridge. With a username like Caster Troy, I was not expecting this set. What a lovely idyllic little house. It's really pretty. The angles of the build and the way the snow has been constructed are stunning. Next is Marine Live 2 by Brick Dangerous. This set looks familiar. A previous version reached 10,000 supporters but wasn't approved by Lego. 
the same creation made it to the target collaboration with LEGO, but unfortunately it didn't win. That was the contest that saw the Viking Village become an official set. Break Dangerous is back with an improved version which includes movable pieces. Next is Taylor Swift The Eras Tour by Donny Dings. This is the fifth and final Taylor Swift set. Next is Chameleon by Jimmy DK. Spot on, it looks just like a chameleon. Jimmy DK has been busy as we've got another submission from them, Train Bookends. I love this idea. I'm surprised Lego hasn't already done something like this since it does produce books. I wonder though, will the Lego be strong enough to hold up books? Next up, we've got Disney's Pixar Luxo JR Lamp by Toby One Kenobi 20506. Nailed it! It looks exactly like the Pixar lamp and ball. Next is NASA's Space Launch System to the Moon and Mars by NASA Rocket Builder. This creation is the same scale as the Saturn V. I can imagine that will be appealing for some people who bought the Saturn V. As this launcher is still in service and is part of the Artemis program to return to the moon, I can imagine it would be very popular. Of course, that's if the aliens allow us to return to the moon. Next up is Great Ball Contraption Showcase by Jazzlecraz. Oh, fun! You can often see these types of builds on social media. And they're enthralling. Having an official Lego set would be a great gateway into that genre. And finally, we have Chessmaster by Caleb Miranda. When I first saw this, I thought it was just another chess set, but looking at the details, it's massive and offers several game modes. Normal chess boards are 8x8, but this goes up to 16x16. 16 16. Wow, what a list! There are so many great sets. I can see Lego making a Taylor Swift set like they did with BTS. So, my top five that I would consider getting if they were production sets are Western River Steamboat. One day I will build out my Lego Disneyland Paris dream and this would look great in Frontierland. Venice. It's so beautiful. Mary Poppins Cherry Tree Lane. Admiral Boom's house got me. Snowy morning in the countryside. It looks like it would be a really interesting build and the end result is lovely. Stud Lane Book Nook. I like books, I like book nooks and I like Lego. This just makes sense. Red the Wolf Sleeping Quarters. I love the show and I must have the Lego for it. Okay, that was six. I cheated. What are your top picks? Let me know in the comments below. Well, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.